someone that also isn't looking as healthy as they used to. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, man. Recorded live from Studio 12A in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. You're listening to the Josh and Friends Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Josh and Friends Podcast. I am your host. My name is Josh. And this week, the show welcomes back Rich Falls to the program. We'll be discussing a number of different topics, including Ric Flair's drinking, Vince Neal's falling, and we'll also discuss the Bears' number one overall draft pick and a review of the Rolling Stones concert in Phoenix. So let's get right into this and help me welcome back to the show. He is the man who once was a huge fan of Aaron Rodgers until he got drafted by the Packers. He is my old buddy, the one and only Mr. Rich Falls. Rich Falls! Falls! What's going on, buddy? What's up, Josh? Not much, you know, just, just living life. It's, everything's going great right now, Rich. Everything's going fantastic. I like how well the studio is put together there, buddy. Yeah, well, you know what? I thought I'd personalize it just for uh, just for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, me too. I thought I'd do the same for you. So. <laughs> Yours looks fantastic. <laughs> looks fantastic right there. Well, hey, Rich, it's good to have you back on. It's been like almost a year and a half since you've been on solo. So it's a little too long. That's a long time. We can't let that happen again. Okay. So... Uh, a lot has happened since uh, since your last appearance, but I want to start off with your beloved Bears. Oh, the talk of the NFL. Yeah, yeah. So you you guys had like one of the best drafts in recent years. Uh, who was your Who was your uh, number one draft pick right there? Uh, Caleb Williams, quarterback from USC, with the first pick in the twenty twenty four NFL Draft. The Chicago Bears select. Caleb Williams, quarterback, Southern California. So uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, Well, since he's the best prospect probably since Andrew Luck, even more so than Trevor Lawrence, uh, we're in good shape. And we loaded up the team for him to try to get something done early. So do you think this is like going to be one of those like immediate game changers? That that could possibly like l- literally just change the entire team right away when he steps on the field. Um, with a mixture of how we put the team together right now, uh, yes, wow. and uh, just uh, his talent alone is there. Obviously, a rookie's going to make rookie mistakes, but we've seen rookies have success before, like. Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, C.J. Stroud last year. So Caleb's more talented than any of those guys coming out of college. So, yes. So the Bears went 7-10 and in 2023. What do you think they're going to be this year? Any predictions? Any early predictions from Rich Falls? I'm going to say uh, with the rookie and uh, granted health being – something every team has to worry about. I'll say uh, 12 wins. 12 wins. I think we're going to win the division. That is pretty, uh, pretty good. I mean, like that's a, that's a lot more wins than last year. Yes. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Now, is he going to be, this is, remember, these are all just early rich falls predictions. Is he going to be the best player to ever sport the number 18 for the bears. Yeah. For the bears. Yes. But who, I mean, who's, I mean, there's, but there's been a lot of 18s in the past. Like he'll, he'll, he'll have a way to go to, for the entire NFL 18s because you know, right. That Peyton Manning guy, but yeah. What about Steve, yeah. Steve Stenstrom? Stenstrom might've wore 18 for a while. Yeah. Uh, Tom Zach. Tom Zach. There you go. I was looking at uh, Tom Zach's numbers the other day, and dude, I did not realize how bad they were. Like, there were several years where he had 
way more interceptions than, than oh, touchdowns. Oh, by far. By far. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 impressive. That's impressive. Yeah. No, it sucks. <laughs> when when his best stretch of his career was uh, being the fill-in starter for Pittsburgh. I mean. <laughs> Well, we just had to get some bears talk in there because, you know, I mean, you're Mr. Bear, you know. Of course. So, And uh, thank you for uh, Washington's wide receiver, Roma Dunze. So. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. So, yeah, you guys had a pretty pretty good draft. You, you gave yourself an A, right? A plus. A plus. There you have it. There yeah. you have it, folks. Well, hopefully he doesn't, you know, nothing bad happens. And, uh, and well, he has a— Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, moving on to the other sport. I don't know, is basketball the second biggest sport now in the uh, in the country? Or is it still baseball? Or what is it? I mean, if you're going basically off TV money and things like that, you'd probably say basketball. Okay. Well, so there's this new superstar basketball player. We, we've, we've spoken about him before in our kind of like chats that we have Anthony Edwards, not now, not the, not the same Anthony Edwards who is in like, you know, Top Gun and gotcha and ER. And we can't forget revenge of the nerds. This is a different Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Much more athletic. <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever seen the, uh, the other Anthony Edwards uh, play, play, play hoop? I, I seen him play volleyball. Okay. <laughs> He's the one guy that's wearing a shirt. He's like, in jeans. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this guy, you know, he's what he plays for the Timberwolves, Minnesota. Yep. Yeah, Minnesota Timberwolves. Okay, he's been he's been around for a couple of years now, right? Yeah, uh, he, he uh, came out a few years ago out of Georgia as a freshman. He was uh, the highest rated um, player coming into college out of high school. So everyone knew he was going to be a great talent, but people questioned his uh, motivation, which seems ridiculous now because he's only gotten better and better and is uh, leading a team that's probably ahead of their time right now. Yeah, because these guys that come out like now are like super young. Didn't was Kobe was like, what? How old was he when he came out? Oh, he was eighteen, going <laughs> on nineteen. Yeah, that's insane. Because he actually played uh, overseas for a year. That's wild. But like this, so this guy. Now there, the the rumor is there's there's the there's rumors. Now what do you what do you think the rumors are that this could be like an actual thing where he's the son of Michael Jordan? What what, what are your thoughts on this, Rich? Because they, they they it's uncanny. Like they they do the side it's by sides. It's just stupid. You think it's like completely? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Out there? It's, it's ridiculous. They're young, athletic black men who dunk the ball like nobody else can. But they do resemble each other if you take their younger pictures and put them together. But no, <laughs> he actually has a father. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have, have they done like the uh, DNA test on this? Uh... Oh, stop. Yeah, no. It, it's not even worthy of a conversation, really. Well, okay. So, Jordan, what, he was on the Wizards in 2001. And uh, was he, he, he's, he was married, right? Or was he married or no? Not that that makes any difference. I mean, he's been married a couple times, yeah. Okay. Because when was that guy born? Like 2001 or something like that or something? Uh. I'd have to look, but yeah, that's probably, it, it's probably somewhere. In there. I like how you're just not even uh, toying with this, no, this, no. this rumor here. All right. All right. Okay. But, but I will tell you, um, yeah, the reason people are talking all that garbage and stuff is because of his game is reminding people of how he dominates and how he plays and how aggressive he goes. And then he's super athletic which kind of separates him because he plays, he actually plays a lot like Kobe, mm -hmm. but he's more athletic than Kobe naturally. Damn. So you, this guy has a chance to be one of the greats, right? 
Or is it too I early? Think he's got all the talent to do so. They said the same thing about Sean Kemp. And look what happened to him. And Kemp was great. He was, but, he was, he was but, great for a few years, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, he started he's eating. in the Hall of Fame, right? He started eating. Yeah. Yeah, he ate Mark Jackson, he like started, I always said. He started eating, started fucking. <laughs> started, there's kids all over the place. I mean, there's, there's a better chance. There's actually a better chance that uh, Anthony Edwards is Sean Kemp's kid. but <laughs> He looks nothing like Sean Kemp, though. Nobody jumps like him. That's true. That's true. Anyway. <laughs> all right. So moving on to another boy, the nature boy. Rick Flair? Rick I mean, Flair. I mean, do I like him as a performer, as a wrestler, or like him as a person? Those could be different things. Well, no, so Rich, many consider Rick Flair to be the greatest wrestler of all time. What are your what are your opinions on that? I mean, for the where do you think he ranks? Where would you rank him? Would you put him in the, oh, the top five? He's, in, he's definitely in the top five. Okay. Yeah, probably top three. Well, so his career spans over 50 years in mm-hmm. six decades. He has over 2,500 wins under his belt. <laughs> I like these stats. He's a 16-time world champ, but he claims Actually, to be a 21-time world champ. Yep. I was going to say... <laughs> Uh, the guy was, he was like a movie star back in the day when he'd come in. I mean, a, he was, he was a, he was a leader and a part of, uh, two, if not three of the best factions in wrestling history. It's amazing. With the four, four horsemen and evolution and WWE. So I don't know much about wrestling, but you know, you and Eric are usually the ones that can fill me in on this kind of stuff. But I did look up, I did see that he's also, you know, on the other side of the ring, uh, he's also been married five times. Mm -hmm. He's had something like 143 speeding tickets, which is (laughs) absurd. Like, what? what? They still let you drive after? He said that he still drinks every single day. I don't doubt that. Do you drink every night? Yeah. I love it. You say that, of course. Yeah. Seven nights a week. Seven days a week. Every day. He said he drinks often 20 drinks a day. 20 drinks a day. And he <laughs> he came back to wrestle in 2022. I remember this because we were all like, is he going to die? Is he going to die in the ring? Because like he's. Yeah, for that last match. <laughs> yeah. And and I guess I, I was reading this. I didn't realize this. I didn't know this. I don't even know if we ever spoke about this or if it was widely known. But he ended up having a heart attack during his final match. That's what he said. That's that I did not know. But <laughs> are you shocked by it? <laughs> he he might have been having a heart attack for a month and a half at that point. But well, Rich, the reason I I'm bringing all this up is. I saw him in a recent interview, and he's not hes not looking the best that he's ever looked. He hasn't looked good in about 20 years. <laughs> but uh, he, was at some, he was at some bar, and he was drinking. I know. I know. Shocking. Mm. I know. And they cut him off for being too drunk, right? That'll happen. And Flair was, he was definitely hammered. You could tell he's like, he's heavily swir- slurring his words, kind of like I am right now. I, uh, I didn't do one thing wrong. You I walked into the bathroom. And you cussed at my kitchen manager. I didn't say one cuss word. Okay. No, ma'am, I'm going to give you a thousand dollar gift just to say to him, kiss my ass. You're disrespecting me. How am I disrespecting you? Telling me to leave. I'm not telling you to leave. I'm just telling you that you're cut off. Oh, I'm cut off because I'm drunk? Really? <laughs> Come on, stand here and talk to me like a man. I'm not going to do that because I'm on the clock. <laughs> you push <laughs> Hey, you want to go out and talk to me in the parking lot? I don't work here. I don't get 
What's that? No, sir. Please stop. Please stop. Okay? What did you say to me? Would you say to me? You say to me? <laughs> <laughs> My question to you, Rich, is Ric Flair, is he trying to kill himself? Because, I mean, dude, he's he's supposedly worth like around a half a million dollars, right? Which it's not a lot, you know, well, it's a lot for us, but I'm just saying like right. in the world of, you know, wrestling being one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I know a lot of these guys aren't, you know, well, the thing the about old school it, guys. I mean, Flair basically has lived his character, right? He became his character. And, uh, you know, when you're known as the reckless spender, spend all the money on all the women, all the drinking, all the toys you can buy. Woo! I mean, exactly. Uh, that's what he turned himself into. <laughs> God, that's crazy, man. Like, yeah, he's, I don't know. I, I just, it was seeing him in these videos because like the, people are just recording him in bars because I, I guess that's where he spends a lot of his time now. I mean, well, when you drink every day, <laughs> 20, 20 drinks a day. Ugh, that is brut like, dude, his liver must be. Oh, I don't even dead. <laughs> but how old is he? He's like in his seventies, right? Like how old is that guy? I mean, look at Keith Richards. That's true. That's true. But Keith Richards even stopped drinking lately. He doesn't. Yeah. I think Flair did go a while with his health issues without drinking, but he probably picked it back up. Man. That's wild, man. Yeah. Flair's crazy. Flair is certifiably insane drinking that much like he is. Now, someone that also isn't looking as healthy as they used to. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, man. No, no. So I, I was going to say Vince Neal, or as some people call him, Vince Meal. I mean, has he looked healthy again for 25 years here? You're right. You're right. But God, he's looking. Yeah. So he's gotten so big and so sloppy. Uh, did you see this recent video? I don't know if you saw this recent video. No, no. He's like tripping on stage. He's like, the guy's such a mess. He can't sing. He looks like hell. He's hanging on to that old, like, biker. Kind of like rocker. Ric Flair. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. So, like, they, they're still, they still dress and they still want to be. I mean, listen, we all want to be, like, you know, 20 years younger. But, man, dude. Ugh, I don't know what he should be looking like. No, no, I know what he should be looking like. He shouldn't be <laughs> on stage singing these songs because it, he can't sing. He cannot sing at all. It's it's horrible. Uh, he, he might be the worst. Been able to? He hasn't been able to in a while. No, no. But the guy, dude, the guy can hardly walk now. He keeps falling while he's performing. Did you see that? I, I keep asking if you've seen I these think videos. I, I think I've seen one well, video yeah, of him. Like there was a few years ago where he was in, I think it was like Tennessee at some festival. He he fell off. He completely fell off the stage. That I saw. I think you sent it to, <laughs> to me. And then a couple of weeks ago, he did a face plant in uh, Atlantic City. Dude, the guy just needs to hang it up, Rich. The guy needs to hang yeah. it up. Am I getting, Agreed. I don't know. I is it's it's sad for for me too because like I yeah. I loved Vince Neil back in the day. Yeah, Motley Crue I mean, were just they were amazing to me. Maybe like, uh, rock performers should be like uh, you know, maybe maybe we need to put an age limit on the presidency and rock performers a little bit. Maybe he needs. Listen, I, if he insists on going out there, maybe they put him in one of those like you know, chairs that Phil Collins sat in, you know, like yeah. just sitting there. Like yeah. a or, uh, or Stevie wonder, Stevie wonder, or maybe one of those thrones, like, you know, when, uh, uh, Axl Rose <laughs> and what's his name of the Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl, like, uh, broke their leg and they were just like sitting in a throne. But here, the difference is those guys could, 
sing. Yeah, I mean, they're not great singers either, but they're way better than Vince Neil. And maybe Vince Neil should, you know. I mean, even Axel is rough to listen to now. Yeah, yeah. Now, speaking of old rock stars, you know who's not like Vince Neil? Mick Jagger. Yeah, you just saw them. I did. And you know what? Dude is like a freak of nature, man. Like, he is nearly 20 years older than Vince Neil. <laughs> and he looks 10 times healthier. He's like, he sings far better than Vince Neil. And he never he never was a great, like, singer, you know, but... but he, performer. Yes. Fantastic performer. He moves... Uh, Who's better than most 40 year olds that I know, you know, the guy is again, 80 years old, Rich, 80 uh, again, years old. You don't have to say these things. <laughs> but yeah, he puts Vince Neil to shame with his, uh, with his energy, his voice. I just, I don't know. I just, I can't believe the band can still play like, you know, I don't know. It's mind blowing to see. I, he, How many breaks in between did they take? Dude, not many. Not many. It's wild. Like, you'd think they'd be like, going to the bathroom. We have to go to the bathroom again. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're like, they're out there like rocking, dude. Like, I mean, so I will say, uh, you know, so they came here a couple weeks ago to the State Farm Stadium, which is the big giant, you know, football stadium. Not my favorite place to see concerts. One of, I mean, they're, I mean, they're one of my favorite bands. So it's like, I... If I'm gonna see him, this is it. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, I'm sure people said that 20 years ago. <laughs> that was the first time, right? <laughs> yeah, I've never seen him before. So, it you know, they're certainly one of my favorite bands. Maybe like you know, top 10, you know, bands of all time. The fact that I got to see them even right now is pretty crazy. But I did take a few notes uh, from from the show. First, <laughs> first, when we got to the parking lot. We started tailgating, playing music, having some beers. This old, this, I would, he's not like really old, but he's not Mick Jagger old. <laughs> but this, <laughs> this guy came up and he came up with his wife and he goes, he started talking to us. And, and I was like, uh, it's like, what's going on, man? He's like, I've seen, uh, I've seen the stones 75 times. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? He's like, dude's retired. He travels around now to like go to Stones concerts. So he, it's it's the new Deadhead. I guess so. Like I, Rich, have you ever seen? Have you ever seen anything seventy five times? Like, have you been to seventy five Bears games? Probably not. Have you been to? I'm, I mean, I watched seventy. <laughs> that does not Bears count. Games. It does not count. That's not what I asked. But I, I, I I'm trying to think of I, I. I don't think I've been to 75 anything. Certainly. No, maybe maybe movies. I mean, I've, the same movie? 75 no. times? Exactly. No. That's what I'm trying to say here. The movies. The movies in general. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like crazy, dude. Like, I I was like thinking to myself, I'm like, I, I, I can't think of any band that I want to see that many times. ACDC. Yeah, but like you see ACDC. And then you're like, I've never seen them once. Well, all right. Well, and, and now I can't. I think they might be touring again. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Too many people are dead. Yeah. Well, you still have the uh, singer and guitarist. So, <laughs> I mean, those are those are the key ones right there. Those are the key guys. Uh, so, no, but I, I'm just trying to think. Like, you haven't seen uh, Blackhawks, Bulls. Maybe if you combined all of them, maybe you've seen seventy five. The most, the most White Sox. Like, yeah, that's been the team that I've seen the most. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that makes and sense. And it's probably not seventy five. Right. <laughs> I don't have season tickets or anything. So. Yeah. Right. Right. But uh, but yeah, no. I saw. So I liked. Uh, I, you know me, man. If I if I meet someone that is like that. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this dude's brain. So I was like, you know, it's just having, having some conversations with this guy. Surprised he's not on the podcast, All right? Right. <laughs> I did take a, a picture. We took a picture of them. I was like, I gotta get a picture of this guy. Like, but no. So the the sound of that stadium, 
it was just, it was rough, man. Like I was like, it was, it was rough. It was a, it's echoey. Well, you were in like, I think well, the last seat. Well, we yeah, we, we were up high. We can't, we always come down though. So we, we came down many, many, many rows down and we we're watching it from, from down below. But like, still, it's just, gosh, man, it's just, mm, it's rough, dude. Keith sounded pretty good, but, Keith, or I'm sorry, a mix sounded pretty good, but Keith, He's like, he's, he's notoriously kind of sloppy, like with his guitar playing. Like I, you know, I love his, love his studio play and, and his, uh, his licks, but, but live. he's just kind of, he's just kind of sloppy, <laughs> but I don't know. But that's always kind of like a, a good thing. Cause you know, the Eagles, they always got shit for being too perfect. And people would like get, they're like, it sounds like you're like listening to the album. I mean, you, there's no kind of different difference, right. you know? And I'm like, all right, well, what do you want them to sound like? You know, I don't know. But I don't know. I wish they would do more of their 60s and 70s stuff because like they were, they were mixing up playing like 80s kind of stuff. And I was like, ah, fucking, I don't want to hear your right. 80s and later stuff. But, you know, they're two on that, the new album. I like the, uh, don't get angry with me. You know, I like that song. Uh, but they, uh, <laughs> they, did, like, they did like a, uh, a fan poll. Which was kind of cool. They did like where they they asked everybody before the concert to vote on some songs, and like, thank God people didn't pick like like a Rolling Stone and Emotional Rescue because not a, not a not a not a huge fan of them doing those songs. But they had Heartbreaker on there, killer song, and then they had Monkey Man. And the guy that was with us, he was like, <laughs> "I want to hear Monkey Man so bad. I, I haven't heard them do that." I want to hear Monkey Man, and the and then um we were out there, and I was like, I kind of want to hear. I kind of hope they pick a Heartbreaker. So they announced it when they announced it. Uh, Andy was like, Yeah, Monkey Man, and he was like cheering for the guy, and I was like, Hey, and he goes, He goes, Hey, man, seventy five times, seventy five times, <laughs> he's earned this. He's earned Monkey Man. He deserves this. And I go, You know what? You're right. You're right. And Monkey Man is an awesome song. I love Monkey Man, but uh, yeah, Rich is like. What the fuck are we talking about, right? <laughs> well, so what was your uh, favorite performance song-wise? Um, you know, I so when they first started, I, I think you know my my brother's like, well, they got to start with start me up, right? Like they got to start with that, and it's like it's kind yeah, of a no-brainer, right? What we would have guessed, yeah. And I'm not gonna lie to you when it when it started, I I. So much emotion came over me because I'm actually seeing the Rolling Stones. It's kind of like when I saw Paul McCartney and I, 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 I didn't cry, but I started getting like, I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm seeing this. Like, this is amazing. And it's like, you know, Like I got chills. I was like, and you know, it was, it didn't sound like the greatest thing in the world, but I was like, just the fact that I was like seeing it live. So great. I was like, ah, oh, man, this is so awesome. This is like, I, I've been waiting so long to see this. So yeah. that was awesome. So that was probably the song that I loved hearing the most, but give me shelter. So great. Cause they had the, the background singers and stuff like that. It, it was, it was good. Yeah, they were good. I mean, dude, there were, th I went through, I went through the, the set list, you know, afterwards, which I'm not even joking. This is no joke. I, I saw, I picked out 30 songs that they could have done in addition to the songs they did. That's how many freaking hits these guys have and how many great songs. And I was like, they could have done a full concert of completely different songs. And it would have, would have been just as good, if not better, if they did that. And I was like, right. damn, dude, that's amazing. I'll tell you this though, Rich. My brother got a little upset at the concert. Uh oh. Actually, it was before the concert because our boy Eric got pulled over once again <laughs> before getting into the concert. So security did one of these. Uh, oh, hey, uh, you, uh, 
Step over here. White guy, you're good. White guy, you're good. White girl, you're good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Sir, step to the side. Andy was like, fucking livid. That's so oh, cool. Oh, it's always. Bad, Although the last time, Josh got pinged, and I was like, ooh. Good. So I was videoing hey. Josh too. I mean, <laughs> I mean, good. So I was like videoing him going through the thing. I'm like, yeah. haha. And yeah. Eric passed. It was funny. Was he wearing his Air Force Ones? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think he was wearing. I, I think, you know. But we're in Glendale. You think we'd be, uh, you know, a little more safe to. Uh, but it is a Rolling I mean, Stones concert. But I don't know. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's almost a joke at this point, right? Like it's like a running, running joke. But I don't know. Yep. Eric was not happy about it. Well, no, I'm sorry. Eric, Eric expected Andy. it. Andy was not happy about it. Well, that's kind of how I felt um, when it happened at the bars when we went out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nobody was as pissed as Lee, but everyone was pretty, pretty ticked off and annoyed by it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, we did run into the guy, the 75 concert guy after the show. And he's like, <laughs> he goes, he, he told, <laughs> he's talking, we were talking for a second because like, we're, we're not getting out. Like there's just lines of cars, you know, for miles. And he's like, he comes out and he goes, dude, so what'd you think, man? What'd you think? What'd you think of the show? And I go, oh, I don't know. It was like, it was, it was good. It was, it was a little echoey for me because it was just such a fucking big stadium. And I prefer these concerts like this, these big giant shows to be outdoors. That way it doesn't echo, you know, you know what I mean? Like it just, it sounds better. Everything sounds better outdoors. Right. But the, the guy goes, goes if if I was to score this at a at a ten, I'd give it a twelve. And I was like, okay, that's let's let's not get crazy here. Let's. Well, I mean, he has gone to seventy five right. shows. <laughs> right, right. But he did he did say this. He goes, he goes, yeah. Like halfway through, I went uh, halfway through the show. I, I went I went down down to security, and I was like, hey. I forgot my heart pills. I need to go back to my car. And they're like, oh, we don't usually let people go out. But I mean, so, but we're going to have to ask the security guy here. So the, the security guy's like, all right, man, you just, just go out there, come back. Uh, I'll remember you. Just hurry up. So the guy, the guy said he, got, he went down to his car and he downed two beers. Sounds like I was talking to like Rich Falls' dad or something over here. And, uh, no. and the guy the guy pounded two beers and he, he went back and he goes, hey man, I'm back. And they're like, all right, all right, come back in. I was like, dude, the dude just saved him like, you know, 40 bucks in beer. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this guy's awesome, man. This guy's nice. amazing. So nice. anyway, um, so Rich, I keep seeing these stories. We're just going to move on from the Stones. Stones were fantastic. Uh, you know, again, not my favorite sounding show, but the fact that I got to see the Stones, bucket list, boom, bucket list. Cool thing. Yeah. So, but Rich, I, I keep seeing these stories about um, these fast food prices. Oh, shit. Fast food prices are, uh, you know, they're, they're just, they're going crazy. All these uh, uh, restaurants trying to screw people over. <laughs> Everything okay. from like the price hikes uh, to shrinking portions and uh, surge pricing. And uh, surge price. Yeah, have you heard? You've heard of that? The uh, who is that? Is it Wendy's? I think I know. I think I know what you're talking about. But um, Wendy's, I think, I is the think... one that they're starting to do the um, the surge pricing. Where where what they're doing is they're during certain times of the day they're going to flex their pricing to like <laughs> so like I, cheaper I thought they, and more. <laughs> I thought they were talking about that, but they ended up deciding not to. Do I think it, they're still going to do it. They just got scared. They're like, "Oh, oh whoa, we didn't get, we didn't uh, think we were going to get this much, much, much press about this." <laughs> so, but they said that uh, I, I was reading that prices in general since COVID have gone up twenty one and a half percent. Twenty one and a half percent. That is astonishing. That stat is crazy. Now, Rich, do you find yourself going out to eat any less or just sucking it up, paying the extra prices for these meals? Uh, I mean, I'd say I'd probably go out a little less. Yeah. Um, but um, the places I do go to usually go to kind of the same places. Yeah. So. Well, I saw this video the other day of this lady. 
<laughs> who ordered this Big Mac. She ordered a Big Mac, right? And you're like, okay, it's a Big Mac. Yeah, they're, like, it's, they're always the same, whatever. So she she lifts it up. She's like, really? Re- really, McDonald's? And she like opens it up and she holds up the patty. I swear to God, you could see it. You could see through it. When this woman ordered a Big Mac, she came across a problem she definitely wasn't expecting. McDonald's. You gotta beat me, right? Look at this patty. Y'all. It's so thin. What? And if you thought that this slice of beef wasn't thin at all, you won't believe how she compares the patty to the other ingredients. It's damn near ten dollar meal. Matter of fact, let's see how thin it is to the pickle. The pickle thicker than the patty. Do you think it's a problem, Rich? That's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. Listen, the Big Mac patties—they're not like—they're not the thickest things, anyways. They're not like a big old whopper or anything or whatever, you know. They're not like the uh, the quarter pounders or anything, but but come on, man! They're like a, you could see through the patty. That's that's ridiculous. Yeah, no. Stop it! No, no. I mean, even if you look at like like if you look at pictures, I'm sure you probably have some like from the '80s at a McDonald's party or something yeah, like that. Yeah. If you see anyone holding a burger, like you can actually see the meat. In, in the oh burger. yeah yeah definitely and now it's all like, bun it was a it was a real burger yeah and now it's all lettuce tomato and bun whatever right. but right yeah gosh those are the but days yeah. remember remember the uh would you like to uh supersize that for 39 cents <laughs> <laughs> boy those days are fucking long gone jesus or i mean even like taco bell like you, you'd be able to get you'd be able to feed a uh, a feast of uh, seven people for 12 bucks. Oh, yeah, dude. I Unreal. Like, we, I mean, what was the, they were like 59 cents for, like, tacos? and Yeah. It was nuts. 50, 69 cents, 59 <laughs> cents. They would, yeah. Every time they'd raise it, like, 10 cents, you're like, ah, who cares? Like, yeah, like, but now it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like 20 years later, and it's, like, oh, it's going up yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, now, now it's like 2.15. Yeah, what the hell, dude? Yeah, I, in, for a for a Taco Bell. Taco. Well, and even like these places that they would give you like a bunch of food. Like if you go into like a Panda Express, they would just give you like <clears throat> they'd just, like slam the rice on there and like just pack it down. I, I went in there, uh, I don't know, last week, and I was with Andy, and I was like, dude, I opened up the thing because there was a drive. They have a drive through Panda Express now, and we, which is. The drive. If you go to the drive-through one of those places, you're gonna get screwed. I think like everybody knows that you're you're gonna get I screwed. I gotcha. So, because uh, you're not sitting there like watching them like make it, you know, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm right? Mm-hmm, yep. Mm-hmm, yeah. So, uh, I we got we got home. I opened up the thing, and it's like a little baby scoop. It's like you took like a regular spoon and like uh, put a little thing of uh, rice there. And I was like, oh, really, really? I feel like I feel like taking it taking it back down there and like what what is this? What is this? Right. I mean, listen, not that I need the uh, extra, you know, rice or anything like that, but it's probably the most healthy thing on there. (laughs) (laughs) Everything else is like coated with like, you know, sugar glaze and like salt. Like, I I mean, it's fantastic, but it's like, Jesus, dude, give give me, give me a little bit more than like a tiny, like regular scoop of rice. Jesus. You're, you're gonna. I mean, the thing was like 12 bucks. Right, exactly. I think most customers like. If you give a big portion, yeah. they rather they rather they're more willing to pay a higher price for a real portion mm-hmm. than pay a cheaper price for a small portion that's not going to fill you. Up. Yeah, no kidding. God, I don't know. I'm just it's crazy, and everyone but, keeps talking about like. Ch- but instead, they do both. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, now it's like you, we're going to screw you the price and the uh, the amount. Yeah. Portion. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, you know, everyone's been bitching about Chipotle too, because Chipotle's like prices are insane. They're yeah. already insane. So you, and then they give you like a little scoop of. <laughs> so you learn in the cook more. Oh, I'm, dude, I, I have gone out so far less in the last, you know, five years anyways. So it's, it doesn't really, it, it only affects me when I, I get shocked when I go out to eat now. Like, we're like, oh, let's just, I don't know. We could just, I don't know. You want to get like some, you know, a couple cheap tacos from Taco Bell? I was like, good God, I can't believe how expensive these are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe it just because I'm like, you know, I think back to like 
you know, the nineties or the two thousands. And I'm like, whoa. Oh, well, you're not as bad as my old man. Oh, really? I mean, what's, what's the old man you, do? When, went into KFC or Popeye's, I forget which one it was, but, um, got a bucket of chicken and he like almost flipped his lid. <laughs> it's like 22 bucks for a bucket of chicken. Damn. Wow. He's like, I can buy 10 of them. <sighs> Poor old man. Whole chicken. They're trying to, they're trying to, they're trying to kill the old man and he's not even uh, getting killed with the deep fried chicken. <laughs> right. Jesus. Man. Is, but yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, oh, Rich, I appreciate you popping on here, man. Um, is there is there anything else we'd like to, uh, any any other topics you want to explore or talk about for, uh, for we? I mean, I mean, I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for football season. Are you excited for the draft? Yeah. You coming out? You coming out for the draft, buddy? Um, Jordan's having the big pool party, buddy. You coming out? There's going to be a are rager. You, are you trying to convince me or trying to deter me? Well, we'll have a, uh, we'll have a tented, uh, uh, spot for you. We'll have the, uh, right inside the doors will be the air conditioning spot. And, uh, <laughs> that's, that's where I picture you and, uh, you and Eric congregating. So, um, I'll do my best, but, uh, to be honest, like, lot going on so i might be virtual but we'll we'll figure that well out. i i i'm not a fan of that but i'll take what i can get i know i'll take what i can I get i know yeah i'm always excited for the draft because that's like the best part of the <laughs> the league right. but right. um you know i i haven't been too good in the uh i i i'm getting too many people that are like really good at fantasy football it, like, right. hey, I want to join your league. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, come on in. And then they kick everybody's ass. And I'm like, okay, this sucks. This sucks. <laughs> we need we need more like Kevin McKinnons and Marty's and and uh, you know we need we need people we need a bunch of people that don't care or just don't fill the roster and you know don't talk about Eric that, like and that. Eric yes he won again he won the uh, the, the the shit trophy the uh, what, what do we call it the uh, hmm. I think it was you edged him out huh yeah he. Uh, he 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 became. He's gonna win that again. He's gonna win the uh, the, uh, the 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 shit trophy. Yeah. So, all right. Enough of this. Enough of that. People are like, what the hell are you talking all about? Right. All right. Okay. All right, Rich. Um, anything else? Anything else before I let you go, buddy? Anything else? No. No, I'm good, man. All right. Good man. to talk to you, though. You too, man. Well, thanks again for coming on, Rich. And let's do this another time. And make yep. sure that it's not. Another year and a half before we uh, have another solo appearance by Rich. All right? We'll make it work. All right. All right. For Rich Falls, I'm Josh. And as always, thank you for being a friend. Peace.